Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video lesson, we're going to be continuing our Shape Defense, which is a tower defense game that we're building. So let's roll the introduction and get right into it. In the previous episode, we ended up just having our game load up. In this episode, we're going to get our navigation, or I should say the top user interface working. We're not going to work on the shop menu or the build menu just yet, but we'll get everything up and running. We are going to be using some 2.3 functions, so just make sure that you are using Game Maker Studio 2.3. So I've already gone ahead and created a group for our user interface, and I created a UI bar and a UI master. The UI master I'm going to have so I can drop into a room or I can use it in the room in it. And basically it's going to create all of the UI items that we need. So let's actually add this into our room in it so we don't forget right now. So right here where we have add UI, let's create a new instance. So we'll say instance, and that's where create depth. And we can just place this at zero, zero. And we want to use get layer depth, and we will pass in the enumerator layer dot UI. And then we want to pass in the object. Now, just remember that we are using our own depth system here. So this is not a game maker function. This is a function that we wrote, which will return the depth, even though we do have the depth within the tiles here or within the layers here, we do have a depth system, but sometimes we'll just be using a custom one. So now that we have the master in there, we need to add in our bar and I've already created the object for that. So this will be a simple instance underscore create depth. And we can again do this at X and Y of zero and the depth, we will use the current depth and then just create that particular object. Now that we're done with the master, let's go over to our bar. We need to make sure that we assign the particular sprite and this sprite, I'm not actually gonna be using nine sprite. We'll use that uh, on a different object. This one is just gonna be the full width of our room. So we have a draw event and the first thing we want to do is draw ourselves. So we'll just use the draw cell function. And now we need to set up some items that we're going to draw here. We're going to draw the cache, the wave, the hit points, and then just the basic word build. Now, what we need to do is we need to set the alignment. We need to set the color, the alpha. And obviously we would do something like draw set alpha, draw set color, draw set V line and H line, but we're wrapping some of these functions and in particular, the color alpha we are doing in a new 2.3 function so we can use draw set where we pass in the alpha and then we will pass in the color so we'll say the alpha is one the color is c white and then we will run this anonymous function here or a callback so basically if we take a look this function here gets the current alpha the current color then sets it to the new alpha and color it runs whatever is inside our function call here and then resets the color and alpha back to what it was so with that, what we can do is we can now use the function set align, which will take both the vertical and horizontal align and just basically merge it into one. So if we check this out, we are just calling the draw set H line and draw set V line with the according variables that we need. So the final thing that we need to do is actually draw some of the text and we will use a draw text extended transform. We'll start off at the position 16 on X, the position eight on Y, I'm gonna tap these in here, and we wanna use a cache value, and then we need to concatenate the global dot cache amount. And this global cache amount is coming from our initialization variable here. And one thing to keep in mind that this is a string and it's trying to add on a number, and normally GameMaker will complain about this, so we need to take this and we need to wrap it inside a string function, which will convert the number to a string. So we'll have string plus string is gonna equal the same variable type and we won't have any issues. So once we have that, we need a separation or line height of zero because we are only using one line. The width we'll say can be 200 pixels before it needs to go on a new line. And we'll just use the X and Y scale as two, and then we'll pass in an angle of zero. So if we've done everything correctly and everything is set up, if we hit F5, we should see a bar and we should see cash for hundred dollars. So let's go ahead and just change some of these things. I'll also have a comment at the top. So we need the cache, we need the waves, and then we need the hit points and the build. So I've pasted it in a bunch of different times. So let's just go through and change some of the variables. All right, so I'm all done pasting and changing the variables. If we take a quick look at it, we have the cache one that we set up and we copy and pasted it a bunch of times. For the wave one, the only thing I changed was the text and the global variable and then the X position. 
the health, I did the same thing, exposition and changed the text. However, the build, um, the build text, I changed the alignment because I want it to start on the right hand side and start writing to the left because I have it going to the room width, which is all the way over to the right and then back 96 pixels. So if I run this particular game right now, I should see that we have the cache, the wave, the health, and then a little build option here. We're gonna be putting a button here in the next episode. Now, the nice thing about this is anytime those global variables change, this automatically updates. So we don't have to worry about doing anything. Our user interface is pretty much almost done. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Please help grow my channel by subscribing or leaving a like. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to throw it in the comments below. To everyone already supporting my channel, thank you so much. And a huge shout out to the following Patreon users in no particular order. Edward, Victor, Robert, Angel, Vil, Annie, Paul, Ian, Darth Wolf, and Ashby. Thank you all so much for the support that I've been shown, and I'll talk to you in the next video.